My stepsister always mocked me because I never had a boyfriend. But now that I'm dating her ex, it seems that she's not very happy about it. Well, I'm sorry, Miss Perfect, that your ex decided to break up with you and go for me. Well, you know what? What are you going to do about it? I'll tell you something about myself. I'm not what you might call a um, completely happy person. It hasn't been that way for a long time and all because of my looks. Everything stereotypically ugly that could happen to a teenage girl could be summed up in my high school identification card. You know, braces, acne, messy hair, raspy voice. Huge glasses to top it all off, the world's worst choice of clothing. Even so, I caught everyone else's eye. And it's because it was impossible not to see me after being a wonderful freak. Nobody noticed me, and as if that wasn't enough, Destiny dealt me the worst possible fate by marrying my father to the mother of one of the prettiest girls in my school. Susan, my stepsister. Um, since sophomore year. I mean, come on, she's beautiful. The complete opposite of me, and she was a popular as a soda in the desert. I'd lose count of how many boys asked her out, and while she helped me at the time... By trying to take me out on her little outings with her boys, she only did this so that she would not have to go alone. Well, I do remember one of my lowest points of adolescence was a party when I knew no one. And while Susan was dancing and laughing with everybody, I was hailing a cab to pick me up so I could finally go home and get relaxed. The only thing I enjoyed about the occasion was the dress that I wore which Susan gave me to top it off, and still, it was the last act of kindness that she had towards me. Since after leaving me alone, and thus me leaving the party, she was scolded, something she never managed to get over until this day. Since then, she treated me somewhat badly, making fun of my appearance and excluding me from all the activities that she did. She was named Carnival Queen, and in her speech she even said, we should all feel pretty, even if we're not on the outside, looking at me when she was speaking. Ah, well, I don't know what hole to hide in, and if there was an award for ugliest girl in school, I was surely going to win after Susan nominated me. Anyways, what I'm telling you are my experiences as a teenager. But eventually, everything got better once I got to college. First, I had my braces removed, leaving me with a set of teeth that I could show off in any photo. I said, if I had this for so many years, it was so I could show my pearls everywhere. And thanks to my stepmother, I had a radical hair change. Of course, it was a treatment that she paid for Susan and me after we graduated. So in that case, well, I was a hell of a lot better off. Also, I became interested in the world of dermo cosmetics and just started experimenting with skincare. And, you know, using cleansers, scrubs, all kinds of creams, acids, serums, you name it. If I can give you all a recommendation, it's to give it a try. Because your skin will thank you enormously. That's why I decided to study pharmacy. The glasses, well, I simply changed the frame so they didn't stand out as much, so... When I got to college, you could say that I was already a completely different person. Yeah, the voice thing was a whole process since I took public speaking and speech classes, and although they could not take away the tone of my voice since it's unique aspect of each person, at least I could have a little more confidence when talking, and thus not sound like a damaged radiator on a winter night. Now I'm just a radiator. That's it. To see two pictures of me, one current and one from high school, is to witness a huge, radical, almost miraculous change. I can now say that I'm more grateful. And while she has maintained her lifelong beauty, she's not as aware of my new charms. And that's because I'll confess something to all of you. Now, just because you're now pretty, it doesn't mean that your life is automatically settled. Much less does it mean that you'll be showered with men or anything like that, because if it did, I would have as many or more suitors than Susan. What happened, and here I confess, is that a result of all the bullying, I have had major depressive episodes, even suffering from body dysmorphia a few years ago, feeling that I have to have surgery even on the color of my eyes. Self-esteem and charisma go hand in hand, and not having one makes the other difficult. I can look good now, but inside I just feel a little rotten, and I think this has hindered my acceptance process a bit. I've never dated a guy before. In fact, because of not having experienced those things at a younger age, as I got older, I ended up with more fear and anxiety about what something as simple as dating could be like. 
song. Things like Susan finally finding the love of her life and getting married did not help me. I had to be a bridesmaid against my will and indulging her every whim worse than anyone else. Because of my whole family thing, the only good part of the marriage was that she, by leaving the house with her husband, would finally be able to leave me alone and stop making fun of my former looks and the fact that I haven't dated someone. And about that, I'd say things have changed a bit. Or at least they're changing as of lately because of a certain little thing that happened. Which, by the way, I don't know how it'll end in the long run. You see, an ex of Susan wrote me recently. He has still had my contact since he dated her years ago, I'd say about a decade. His name's Hector. And, uh, well, what he had with Susan, while it did not last long, maybe lasted about three months, was one of the best relationships that she ever had. The guy would buy her flowers and chocolates, and if there's one thing that woman likes, it's to be given that kind of stuff. So he already had her in the bag. But I guess you could say things took a turn due to the situation that to this day I don't understand and that they left each other. Susan spent almost a whole month crying, thinking about Hector and their breakup, and I was in limbo. Since I did not care much about my bully's life, I didn't want to interfere too much. Well, with that context, now you can understand my alarm when I see that Hector wrote me just a few days ago. First, he asked me something about the pharmacy where I work, and after a few hours, he thanked me. I thought he had forgotten, but he was busy, and asked me if I had some free time to talk. Well, that part took me by surprise, and I was about to say no, but my mind and fingers played against me, and I decided to accept. We set up a meeting for this Saturday, and I don't know what might happen with that, I know it's very whimsical for me to say this, but number one, the guy's single. Number two, it's been years since Susan's wedding, so I don't think we'll discuss that subject. And number three, he was mildly interested in me in conversation. I'd post the conversation here for you guys, but I'd rather not out of respect. But that is it. Well, I'm still going to see him. And although I'm nervous, I won't let my nerves get the better of me. I don't think it's a date, but if it is, well... It is what it is. Okay, I have no idea anyways, but I'll find out in a few days and tell you all about it in detail. Update number one, two days later. Okay, I was perplexed and dumbfounded. I mean, remember I had a date with Hector? Yes, it ended up being a date in a cafe, and even though I was unsure what it was about, I still wore a very nice colorful dress. In case it was something positive... If it wasn't, I would have been incredibly embarrassed, and boy, was it something very, very positive to be. At first, we did catch up and chit-chatted about our lives and some stuff at work. He's developing an application with other programmers at work, and you see, this app allows to monitor pharmacies and drugstores in the state with national projections, and he wanted me as a contact for the pharmacy where I work. He told me in a very comical way that he was about to write Susan to ask for my contact, but he preferred to text me directly via chat. He still remembers the relationship that they had, and it was then that we were able to talk about this subject that's been so mysterious to me for years. You know, like when um, your favorite series that was canceled years ago comes back for that final season just to tie up some loose ends. He told me that at the beginning... The relationship was stable and very good, but Susan's attitude as the days went by became more and more overbearing and haughty, and that was something that he just disliked. Although, it was not the reason for the outing we ended up talking about Susan. I told him that she's been married for a while, but that she was still the same person who looked down on everyone. He even reminisced about being bullied by Susan and told me that, Although he and I did not interact much at the time, he still did not think it was right for her to say that about her own sister. Um, the evening progressed and we continued talking about life until late and before I knew it, it was already midnight and the restaurant was about to start to close. So he offered me a ride home and I accepted. It dawned on me that for the first time in my entire life, I had a conversation with a guy all night and I had a good time, a really good time. He made me feel special, and I know you will say that I'm delusional, that at 28 years of age, it's very sad that this happened. But I feel it's sadder that it would have never happened. He never went over the top with me. He just said sweet things and was straight to the point. Of course, on one hand, my brain tells me that he did not advance too, because he did not consider me the prettiest in the world. 
Not even a rivaling Susan, but anyways, it was an excellent evening, and we agreed to keep in touch for a follow-up. If it happens, I'll be extremely happy, and I'll get back to you with the gossip. Update number two, a month later. Gosh, how much can I tell you uh, that has happened in just one month? Hector and I have been going out all these weekends, and even three days ago, he came to me at the pharmacy asking if I wanted to have lunch with him. He used the old tactic of, oh, I was just coming to buy something and found you there. What a coincidence. <laughs> yeah, right. Like I was born yesterday. Anyways, we've seen a lot of each other and talked quite a bit. He and I have had a lot in common, like a love of cats, and we love coconuts in any presentation except ice cream. So much has been our interaction that I even confessed to him. Well, to give you an idea about my self-esteem issues, and he thought it was strange since he considered me quite beautiful. Although he told me that he never saw me with lustful eyes as a young man, but he also did admit that now, as an adult, he had other priorities, and now he did see me as one of them. All as a result of a simple conversation. Mind you, we haven't gotten the most extreme part. Telling Susan. I mean, it's not like we have to explicitly tell her or ask her permission or something like that. It's also not like we're going to hide that we have, or I don't know if I could say we have anything. But when Susan comes to visit us at the house and she goes back to her offhanded comments about how I won't have a boyfriend and that I'm pretty uh, enough in on the inside... I can just say, huh, if you only knew who was looking for me, you would die of envy. I would like to see her face when I say that. Well, moreover, I do have an idea, but it's somewhat evil, which is simply to post in the same story a picture of Hector and me. And eventually she'll see it. I don't expect Susan to be the only one to be surprised as the fact that me showing the world that I dated a man, a real human, three-dimensional, non-fictional man will make more than one spit out curiosity. Even my parents will start to ask me about it. And no, I haven't even told them about it, and the only people who knew about Hector and I dating are my pharmacy buddies. And that's just an isolated branch of my life that does not interact with others. That's fine. It keeps me calm and in a sense, but I know a lot of people will say something like I should not care if Susan finds out. And I should go public, and a lot of my peers say that, but I don't feel it's in such a good taste. At the end of the day, Susan's married, and while I don't feel I see children in her future, I'd still rather save myself the trouble. But now the question remains, what happens next? Because I say, um, this thing that Hector and I are having is developing quite well. To the point, well, I'm a little embarrassed to say it, but I'm really excited for the near future. It's the first time something like this has happened to me, and it's with somebody who seems like such a nice person. He even told me that he preferred my company to Susan's, and that if he had known I was that interested, he would have had tried something with me before her. There, even though I think it was a lie, he's just saying that to make me feel good, I still think it was very, very sweet. And it expresses how much he appreciates and esteems me. Now, I'm thinking about only one thing. And that's something he told me yesterday, about going to a Japanese garden-style park next week. I mean, this is a big deal for me, because number one, it's the first time that we'll go out to such a luxurious place. We used to go to the cheap places before, and number two, considering the place, I think it would be a normal thing for us to uh, just go out and take pictures. And if he gets to share them online, Susan will see them, and it will unleash a living hell in my household. But what will I be able to say to him? Honey, please don't share anything about the happiest day we're going to have together. Because I'm telling you, I'd actually like to share it. Update number three, two months later. I knew Susan could be evil, but I did not know the scale of her evil. I mean, she simply built different. With more evilness than common sense, and as you will notice in this brief introduction, she already found out about what I have with Hector. The truth is that this has fallen flat. In parts, it all started because I posted some pictures I took with Hector. Basically, a collage of all the nice moments that we have. You know, dating back almost a quarter of a year. We haven't posted anything about us yet, and what a coincidence that one of the first to comment was Susan. And she said, uh, need to talk. She got home faster than a rooster could crow, and she starts to complain, and she says, why are you doing this to me? She says, you've got to be kidding. 
And I say, oh, well, what did I do to you? It's all a setup. I know it. It was, well, not a setup, but I was about to reply that if I have done it as revenge, it would perhaps be for all the bullying she's done for me throughout our lives. But that surprisingly was not the case. It was a simple coincidence, and you could even say that karma applies a little. However, she kept insisting that it was all fake, and Hector was somehow cheating on me, and that he was using me as a springboard to get her. She would have seen, oh well, she was like a person who swears she saw a UFO in the neighbor's yard just because his dog has a new haircut. Susan starts to create a whole movie inside of her head, and went so far as to say that if all that was going on was true, he must be cheating on me for playing a cruel joke. She told me that he used to do that like when he put the thumbtack on the PE teacher in high school, and there I corrected her and told her that it's been another boy that she also had dated, not him. So she was so obfuscated that she had even started to mix memories. It was absurd, almost laugh out loud funny. But neither my parents nor I were laughing, more like worrying. Susan, she went so far as to say that Hector was actually gay and was just using me as a cover-up. First, it was accurate. That would have made her look bad too, right? Second, cover for what? We live in the 21st century. It's not like you need to keep someone's sexuality closed. She sounded like a kid, trying to explain why the moon chases her around, trotting out on conspiracy theories after the other, and my parents had to intervene, as they felt Susan was getting overheated with the situation. And my mom said the most sensible thing in the world, and I quote, I don't understand your annoyance, honey. You broke up a long time ago and lasted almost nothing as boyfriend and girlfriend. Also, Aren't you married now? What's wrong with the guy dating your sister? According to Susan, it was a matter of principle. But we all know it's nothing more than jealousy. A simple jealousy at seeing that. You know, now I could take the lead in all the disputes of who was prettier than who. Obviously, she could not help but throw those comments at me, saying that now I was taking advantage of someone noticing me. But she just intermingled it with the other comments, and I was already tired not knowing what to do or say, so I decided to leave the place, announcing that I was going over to Hector's, and Susan told me that if I did, I would look like a lousy sister and that I might regret my decision. That's right, my sister threatened me. My parents did not say anything to her because they were also tired, and I just left the place. While she continued with her tantrums and her imaginary speeches, when I got to Hector's place, I told him about what happened. He turned pale. He doesn't like that kind of conflict, and he did not feel comfortable causing so much chaos in my home. I explained to him that it wasn't like that, and that, that Susan was exaggerating, but right in the middle of the conversation, something happened. And it's precisely why I tell you that Susan can be such a wicked person. All she had to do was post a huge paragraph on her social media, describing how I was a selfish, bad sister, and all the bad things that she went through with Hector during her high school years calling him emotional, psychologically abusing, claiming to have an emotional sequel because of their breakup and that quote in an attempt to relive demons of her past. Yeah, I'm not exaggerating. Her words, not mine. Although very poorly written, denoting that she was writing at the speed of anger. We had agreed to go out together so that we could make fun of her, her husband and her perfect life. What a load of crap she wrote! And the worst thing about it, guys, is that when uh, there were so many people who supported all this, but not because she was right, just because it's Susan. And knowing her, they knew that they had to be there for her. I mean, she was going to arm her own legion to be against Hector and me. That's exactly what we were avoiding in the first place. And before we knew it, we ended up with a DM full of comments from people that we've never met in our lives. Only insulting us and wondering how could we sleep at all, knowing Susan was suffering. She'd only found out a few hours before, and I don't understand how people seem to miss the fact that she's a woman with over two years of marriage. And that the guy she's talking about was only her boyfriend for a very brief period of time. And at one point, Hector told me he was going to respond to the post, but I told him no, it wasn't worth it. Still, this all hurts, and it puts us in a public eye to be the focus of all the haters, who have simply nothing better to do. But, anyways, if only people knew that she was really like this, maybe I should find a way to fight back,
but I would not know how to do it. Update number four, a week later. Karma, it always finds a way to find us. Uh, this happened to Susan for racking up so many years of teasing her sister and when she was at her worst. As it turns out, I learned a little details about her life that would change her forever. Her husband was cheating on her. I haven't talked about the character, and that's because Susan's husband's a guy who has all the personality of a politician. I mean, smiling, greeting everyone, to the point where he manages to convey a somewhat creepy aura. Anyways, I've interacted with him very little since he had joined our family, but I never imagined that he could do something like this. I knew because some of our common friends told me so. Then I was bombarded with the news. I felt it was a sign of something big. Remember the post that she made about us, the one that got her, I don't know how many words of support and help from everyone? Well, in one of her statements, she confesses that she'd seen Hector cheating on me. But since I'm a good sister, I proposed a deal. I say that because after she kept insulting me, I told her that if she kept doing it, and if she kept saying things about us, she was going to reveal something on my part. She kept insulting me, only in a different, more subtle way, but I've had enough of subtlety, so I told her. You keep telling me things about my looks or how well I get along with Hector, and I swear you're going to regret it. You're always just having your life made, so leave my life alone. For a moment, she froze. So she came closer to me just a few inches away from my face, and she said, Dared to do it? So I replied, I wish I could be the one to tell you the truth to your face, but it feels it's not my business. Oh, and by the way, tell your husband, uh, rather, he tells it to you. Oh, uh, well, maybe him or his lover. And then she replied, excuse me. And that's when, uh, Sky opened up. She started unloading a bunch of profanities, and my parents had to calm her down, and it was so comical, because it was just me paraphrasing a lot of things that she, in and itself, had said to me. Then she started to realize how uh, things as if she had regression from a thousand years ago. She was now doing some math that I don't know about in her head, and sooner rather than later, she went to talk to him. After a couple of hours, she came back to the house in an absolute fury. He started shaking me, repeating, How could you say that to me? Now my life is ruined. But I didn't understand. Did she prefer to be absorbed in the truth rather than be unhappy? Things got worse when I told her, I think your toxicity has reached its limit. And that's when the cue for her to start unloading on me happened. She ripped at my face, but I managed to pull her hair so suddenly I ended up pulling some of it off. In my defense, I didn't know her hair was that weak. And it wasn't until she saw herself in a mirror that she could appreciate her new bald head before I could continue her showing that my life has become one big endless coincidence. So... Hector suddenly appeared in the house, coming in and having heard the screaming. It was the first time Susan seen Hector in person for years. He asked, what the heck's going on? He simply grabbed my arm and pulled me away, saying, don't bother her anymore, let's go, and took me to his house to attend to the scratch on my face. It was nothing serious, really, but it burned like hell, because I think in my gums, too, it got cut, so I ended up spitting out some blood. To conclude, well, I ended up doing what I promised, telling my story on social network, detailing the trouble that happened with Susan, and about how many of those things were false that she said. I liked it because many people, victims of Susan's bullying over the years, reacted to my post and even hers. They looked up the post that she did a week ago just to correct it. And then, uh, the strangers who defended her in the first place came to repent deleting their initial comments from Susan's postings. Well, now her reputation is in the toilet. But it's funny because this impacted too much, to the point where her husband's job got a wind of it. He works as a model for a marketing agency, and according to my parents, now he's getting fired for giving their company a bad image. And that was the biggest source of income that they had. It's not so crazy to say that their lives were ruined because of me even though I wasn't the one who cheated on their partner. Yeah, you know what I mean. Anyways, I've been staying at Hector's house since yesterday. He told me that if I wanted to stay with him longer, it's no problem. I confess that since we've been going out together, my spirits have been high. My self-esteem is now improving, and it's just amazing how much a good single person can do for you. 
But anyways, when it's the right person, I think it's even normal. He even ended up making me fall in love with the phrase, Your bully era is over, and now you deserve the opposite for the rest of your life if you let me. Something tells me that Hector and I will be together for a long time to come. The comments on this one were pretty interesting. A lot of people were very upset with Susan, and a lot of them even said the reason that her husband probably cheated on her was because Susan was so obsessed with other people's relationships and other people's lives instead of focusing on her own marriage. I don't know how true that is because we didn't really see any information from her husband. We didn't learn much about him, only the fact that he cheated. I do want to know what you guys thought about today's story, so if you want to drop it down below in the comment section, that'd be cool. I love to see your opinion on things and just discuss it with you guys down below. My name's Mr. Redito. I narrate stories like this every day. If you guys want to be a part of these daily stories, consider subscribing. Have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow. And of course, remember, it's cool to be kind. See ya.